My name is Jeff Martin. I'm an artist. I live in Melbourne, Australia. I'm going to visit 12 of the world's best restaurants. So I'm going to go to those restaurants, spend one night there. I'm going to sketch the kitchens during service and try and make a painting based on that experience. So yesterday I was in Copenhagen and I've just landed in Brussels and heading towards a little town on the Belgian Netherlands border called Slaus. The restaurant's in Little Town Square, right in the middle of um, this town. Turned up at the high car, forgot to you know, get any cash as well. So I've got a credit card, and then I didn't even think that I wouldn't be able to find somewhere to stay. Went from one town to another town to another town. Finally, we end up here in this quaint little village with a population of 400, and a lovely um, husband and wife, and with their kids, they run this hotel, and they're staying here. The cyclists come through here all the time. It's part of a bike tour and people come in to have a drink and get a stamp in their little book to say they've been here. This place is very odd. It's got the Australian ice cream shop, which has nothing to do with Australia. It has waffles and scones and weird music and a whole lot of sex shops. My grandparents start here, and it was um, a barber shop and a little souvenir shop. And in the souvenir shop, my my, uh, my grandparents had a little uh, little restaurant with some simple simple things. And then uh, after a few years, my my parents uh, came in to help here. And they sent the son off to go and learn how to cook at culinary school. He went off and. Um, did very well. I started in 1990 and then in 1995 we have the first star and then 1999 the second and 2005 the third one and for me it's I don't work with a lot of uh, great restaurants with Michelin stars one for a few months because then I must go back to my parents uh, to help my father because he was ill in that moment and I help him in the kitchen and I never, uh, I never uh, go in the world to, to see another restaurant as I stay here. I was just blown away by the technology and the, the layout of the kitchen. Very purpose-built and all feels really new. And the sous chef explained to me that he burnt the uh, restaurant to the ground. So we might as well do it exactly as we want it. Very, very precise, accurate kitchen, purpose-built for the food. And it's a rare thing. The benches are all handmade. They're curved stainless steel on all the corners. We've also got a barbecue in the middle of the kitchen. Press a button, the barbecue comes up. It rises out of the bench. A cone of silence comes out of the roof to suck the smoke away, like magic. We have the whole kitchen uh, customised, and it's. Uh, I think because the space is not big enough. The other thing that's really interesting is, see this window behind me, at the end of service, as soon as the hot food's finished, that closes, it slowly comes down. So it says to the guests, food's finishing, kitchen's gone, you're on your own, thanks for coming.
I've done a quick sketch of the kitchen during prep, but it's getting a bit crazy down there at the moment, so it's just stay out of it. They're about to mop the floors, it gets a bit slippery. Always underneath the pass, you're gonna get beautiful yellows because of the heat. So I'm thinking about the painting as well as thinking about the best angle, but I'm also thinking about where to be, you know, out of the way. So I'll get down there early. It'll be a lot calmer later on. We're going to join them for a staff meal tonight. We've been invited to do that, which is really a real honour. It's like, come and sit with us. If you decide bravely to go into the fine dining business, don't expect to make money. You know, Renee's got 50 staff serving 42 customers. <laughs> it's just bizarre. Um, it'll probably be a similar equation here. If you want something, you want it and you have the, the, the balls to, to do it every day, then you, you can also do it over here in a small town like, like Sluis. You make yourself a destination point. You make yourself somewhere that, that people are coming to you, they've got to find you and they want to find you. And you guarantee people are going to be coming from all over the world to eat at this place. I'm not the chef, I'm just Sergio. I work also like the guys. And then if they feel that, they go for you. And we push every day so hard with all the team. And I have a lot of respect also for the guys who work here every day. And they know that. Game on at seven o'clock when they walk in, you've got to be ready to serve. And last one the group. That's where they're at. They're all just having a little bit of a panic. But it's control, it's not panic. Panic's the wrong word. In the chef's book, it's almost footnote sketches for me, which I don't expect anyone to understand. I'll draw a circle for a head and I'll put an arrow saying which way that person's looking. And I don't necessarily need to spend the time in the kitchen drawing what that person looks like. Uh, I have a photograph of that. I do a couple little lines so I know which person's which. But I'm more concerned about movement and position. If I had a, a, a new dish in my head, then, then you have the taste in your mind. And then you must make a dish with it. And then you have a look for the composition, what kind of dish you, you dress it, the visual effect, the techniques, the colouring. is also very important. Sometimes you're busy one week with it or you fix it in one week and sometimes uh, it costs you four or five months to, 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 to get that perfect dish that you want with that exact flavours, uh, proportions. Come on, hurry, guys. Dress, dress, dress. Christian, dress. You go dress. Yeah. Come on, hurry. 30 pitches afterwards. Yeah. Or we do 11, maybe. Number one short. It was very fiddly. The food was so... so labour-intensive. <laughs> I've captured the, um, the size of the kitchen. I've tried to communicate the cleanliness because it's ultra-modern. So now the devil's in the detail. When it's all, uh, all the problems seem to be solved, and I'm comfortable with it, I sign the work. It's starting to tell the story of the restaurant as I remember it. I think. I got to the station nice and early in uh, Brussels. Had a nice beer in the sunshine. 
and then I checked with about 10 people that were on the right platform, and the train was going to Paris. My visual diaries are really important to me and they record the whole journey of my trip and the funny thing about catching the wrong train and this mistake is intimate moments like this would never happen. The woman on the right wasn't even supposed to be on this train, she was just seeing a friend off so she got stuck in this situation and none of this would have, this drawing wouldn't exist, that moment wouldn't exist. It was quite intimate. We obviously made it. City, one of the things I like to look at is the position of the restaurant in relation to the general food culture. In Paris it's kind of easier for me because I've got a great friend here. She now runs food tours around Paris. It's like anything, it's local knowledge. People that I like to support and that I prefer are small artisans. And those people are not necessarily in the guidebooks. Or these people are much harder to find because they're not within the tourist precincts because they can't afford the rents. The beauty with bread is that when you do something exceptional, people can make a double effort. Uh, they will walk longer distance to find you and they will even be able to pay, not say higher price, but uh, uh, a little, yeah, uh, a bit more. Here I, I select the flower according uh, to the uh, aroma. I, I want to have something which, which gives taste. I, I don't want specific color. Of course, uh, naturally good high-grade flowers are rather yellow than white. I want taste. I want tradition. So I look for old-fashioned fruits. The, not, not a kind of uh, genetically modified thing, and which new, looks nice, beautiful, yeah, ye, ye, no, but no taste. I want the taste, I want the tradition behind. So I try to find old gender of, of figs. Uh, just a few people do in the south and uh, they don't sell everywhere. It's just you have to go there and, and uh, taste is, is the key. Taste is the key for everything we do here. It's beautiful to meet you. Thank you, <laughs> a pleasure. Thank you very much. There are a lot of chocolatiers in Paris, but this one's very special. He only has one shop, everything is made on premise, upstairs, everything's prepared fresh daily, and he's not shipping stuff in from a factory outside Paris. Le chocolat a cet univers incroyable qu'une femme a. Prenez une femme, parlez-lui de chocolat. Elle est déjà en partie conquise. Je ne veux jamais voir un millefeuille en vitrine. D'une part, parce que ça prend l'humidité. Une fois que ça a pris l'humidité, c'est du carton pâte. Vous savez que vous croquez dedans et c'est complètement élastique. Vous avez un produit humide, vous avez un produit qui ne sent plus le beurre. Vous n'avez plus un produit en pleine fraîcheur. Or, je trouve dommage aujourd'hui un produit d'une telle grande qualité qu'on qu l'abîme parce qu'on veut le faire à l'avance. C'est dommage. Je trouve que le mot artiste, c'est comme le mot passion. Aujourd'hui, on l'emploie un peu n'importe comment. Ah, pourquoi La passion, quand on dit tu es passionné de ton travail, non. Parce que quelqu'un qui est passionné est complètement fou, déraisonné. Et dans le déraisonnement, tu n'arrives pas à progresser. Quand tu es amoureux, tu arrives à progresser. Ce n'est pas la même chose. Merci beaucoup. Merci à vous. 
I'm on the way to the 11th district, which is an unlikely place to have one of the world's best restaurants. It's a bit grungy, it's a bit hip, but this is, you know, affordable rents. This is why these guys are here. I couldn't believe it when you told me it was 50 euro for five courses. I mean, that's 10 bucks a course. And do you come here because the boys are sexy or because the food's sexy? The, the boys are sexy, the food's sexy. Moi, j'ai toujours voulu dans mes dans dans mon idée, c'était de faire de la cuisine personnelle d'auteur dans un cadre bistrot parce que pour moi ça c'est Paris. C'est ces cadres là, c'est ces lieux comme ça, c'est Paris. Depuis toujours, j'étais attaché et je voulais faire à manger dans un endroit comme ça, populaire et simple. The 11th best restaurant in the world, currently, and here we are, about to start. We get one night, one shot at this. You know, I've got to get all my information from my paintings. Everything has to be captured in one go. So there's a little bit of pressure to make sure that you don't miss anything. Kind of wired. Let me show you something. Laura Button. Oh, yeah. Cool. It's a really small kitchen, really tight. Usually, the smallest kitchens make the best paintings because I will emphasize that. And on a large canvas, the figures will be bigger, it'll be tighter, and I'll, I'll play with that. As a painting. The sketches in this, this particular kitchen will be very focused on position. I need to know who's where and why. How long when did you get the restaurant? Sorry? When did you take the restaurant? Four years and a half. Why this location? Because of the area, I like this, 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 this district, and uh, we was looking for a bistro. Yeah. So uh, we found good. this place. I, I know this place before. Was it a restaurant before? Yeah, yeah, it was the same. Yeah. And nothing changed. No, we didn't. Change. Really? No. So I've been in the kitchen for. 15 minutes just before service, just sketching out the way it's going to work. And what I'm going to do with this particular painting is approach it from above. Stop. So I've already mapped out the floor plan. And then what, when I come to the painting, I'll push elements of the wall back and pull other elements forward. I'm looking down on these people, which are vertical, and the bench is vertical, but I've pushed the struts back so I know where each strut is for each bench. So I'll pull the bench forward here. I'm pushing it back, but it, it, will, it will be more exaggerated when it comes to the painting. The kitchen looks very big in here. <laughs> yeah, because it's very small. Well, if I look at this, I look, this looks like a really big space. So, well done. It's all the très grand, huh? Mr. Duffers? Ah, it's only the start. Uh, 
we live together uh, more than uh, more than outside of the restaurant. So <laughs> we, if we don't have good time in the restaurant, it's a bad life, no? So it's better to 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 be like that. But sometimes I can uh, I can uh, scream. Huh? <laughs> I um I I thought it felt a bit like a, a football team. A football team? Yeah. yeah. But not French team because now a French team. <laughs> <laughs> <Very good. laughs> it is about teamwork and the way these guys operate together and enjoy themselves while they're doing it. Working in such close quarters, pumping out two thousand plates a night. <laughs> um, it's unbelievable. every beautiful woman in the restaurant was, and he managed to carry a plate to every single one of them. I don't think you should put that in. <laughs> if, if the restaurant exits just for me, the beautiful woman? Yeah. No, I don't think so, no. That's <laughs> no. no, different. Well, we're outside Chateau Brion, 15, 16 sketches in two hours, two and a half hours, three hours. I don't even know what the time is. I think it must be about nine o'clock. We've been here since about four in the afternoon. Pretty happy with the way it's gone. It's the easiest one I've ever done. I knew straight away how the painting was going to turn out. It's just a matter of working out where everyone is. The kitchen's so tight, it was a bit of a problem. But it's um, done and dusted, number three. I've been mucking around with this one for six months. And I could play with it for the next 10 years. Those piles of plates that he's reaching up for are um, in and out, in and out, in and out all night. It's a story of volume. Damn. I've drawn the bell. I've got the bell in. That bell was definitely the bell there, but I've left the there was a little Eiffel Tower hanging. Travelling to the south of France to visit a destination point restaurant, which is Great. It's a draw card. It's, it's got one of the best and most prominent reputations in the food industry and world, and I can't believe I'm going to see the kitchen of Michelle and Sebastian Bra. Mm -hmm.